The person who invented the hard disk is really a genius. Just such a small piece of stuff, but can store 1000 movies. Now take apart a hard disk to see the internal structure. This is used to store data platters, platters mounted on the spindle, the spindle to 7200 revolutions per minute to drive the platters rotating. This part is the magnetic head, which is the core component of the hard disk and serves to read the data inside the hard disk. This gadget at the end of the head is the read slash write head. To avoid wear and tear, the heads do not come into direct contact with the platters, but are 15 nanometers apart which is equivalent to 1 slash 100 000 th of the thickness of a sheet of paper, and the heads return to the landing zone only after the power is turned off. The data read by the heads is connected via cable to a printed circuit board underneath, and on the outside of the board are the data and power connectors. All of these components need to be completely sealed because the heads are only 15 nanometers away from the platters, and the largest dust can reach even 10,000 nanometers, which can easily cause serious damage if dust gets in. The platters used to store data are also high-tech, with more than 500,000 magnetic tracks on them. The magnetic track is divided into multiple sectors, and each sector has a synchronization area, address area, data area and error correction area, and our data is placed in the orange data area. And a movie needs to use at least 300,000 sectors, so how does the magnetic head read the disk data? Actually, all our data is stored in the form of 0 and 1 and mechanical hard disks utilize the direction of magnetic particles to differentiate between 0 and 1. Because the magnetic field strength of the heterogeneous magnetic domain area is much higher than the same level, so the principle is very simple. Heteropolar adjacent magnetic domain area are marked as 1, the same level adjacent magnetic domain area is marked as 0. And read the magnetic head inside the special conductive material can be sensed through the intensity of the magnetic field to identify these marks and ultimately be read by our computer. Writing data is equally complex. The back of the right head is covered with coils that generate a strong magnetic field when an electric current is applied. The magnetic field is applied by the head across the air gap to the disk below, and these atoms are then forced to align the magnetic field with that applied by the head. This area then becomes a permanent magnet, where the orientation of the magnetic domains is preserved for a long time, even if the head is removed. Do you know what an animal contaminated by nuclear radiation really looks like? After the horrific Chernobyl incident, are the so-called mutated creatures rumored to exist really real? In the early hours of April 26, 1986, the number 4 reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in northern Ukraine suddenly exploded. Countless amounts of radioactive material spread through the atmosphere with the fire in the sky. The whole of Europe was enveloped in this cloud of radiation. This was the worst nuclear accident in human history. According to the statistics, the amount of nuclear radiation released by the Chernobyl accident is 500 times the amount of radiation released by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Japan. The whole thing ended up killing 31 people on the spot from the huge amount of radiation. 270,000 people developed cancer, of which 93,000 have already died. And those who suffered from severe radiation sickness, soon their skin began to peel off. Their entire bodies were covered in searing pain. After they died, their bodies were encased in lead sheets and cemented into the ground. After the outbreak, the area around Chernobyl became a silent city of death. But what was not expected? Within a few years of the disaster, the pigs and cows in the neighborhood showed a high probability of congenital deformities. Many explorers claimed to have seen giant rats attacking humans. The mutation of livestock was horrifying. There's even a webcam that's been circulating of people traveling to a nuclear radiation zone and under the infrared light, a couple of humanoid creatures came out. They kept chasing and biting the filmmakers, although these so-called mutant rats and mutants are rumors. But after scientists studied the animals in the radiation area, they found that some species did show signs of genetic mutation which suggests that the effects of Chernobyl's radiation exposure on local life are long-lasting. But the irony is that 25 years after the evacuation of Chernobyl, the wildlife here has instead begun to flourish. Perhaps nature can recover without humans, though it's become a home for plants and animals. But it's also a place many people can never return to. The man who invented the piano was a genius. 
The piano has been around for more than 300 years and is found in almost every concert hall, and the internal structure of the piano is extremely complex, so today we will talk about how it works. The first thing you notice when you open the piano is the strings. They are stretched on a piece of cast iron frame, which is very strong, otherwise it would not be enough to support the tension. On the right side the strings are shorter and thinner, and they are responsible for producing the high notes, while on the left side the strings are longer and thicker, and they are responsible for producing the low notes. The different lengths of the strings give the piano its unique shape, and it is only the vibrations of these strings that produce sound. There are 88 keys on a piano, 52 white and 36 black. Each key is actually a long lever, and usually they are invisible. Pressing a key sets off a chain reaction that results in a hammer striking the string. Whereas most keys can strike three strings at the same time, for the lower notes they will strike two strings, while the lowest notes will only strike one string. This is because the lower frets have thicker strings, so they produce more sound, and the movement of the hammers involves a series of chain reactions. Let's take a look at one of the keys, a mechanism known as piano action, and now break down the mechanism one by one. Pressing the key causes the lever to move up and down, just like a seesaw. Next is a part called the whippin, which is fixed at the end and can be rotated, and is attached to a long rod that spans the entire length of the piano. The control cabinet is fixed to the top of the whippin, and when working the top will hit this screw to make it rotate slightly. There is also a rod that holds this part in place. Here there is a hole in the control rod which allows another part to pass through. This part is called the jack and it is fixed to the right side of the whippin. As it rises, the tip strikes this cylinder causing it to rotate, and then another rod holds this part in place. At the end of the movement the jack protrudes slightly here. The top of the jack at the end applies the final push to the hammer, and the harder the key is pressed, the harder the hammer strikes the string, meaning a louder sound. This means that if the key is pressed lightly, no sound will be heard. Note that a key can be pressed repeatedly and the hammer will still work. This part is called the damper, and can be seen actually resting on the string. Lowering the key causes the damper to rise and allow the string to vibrate. Once the key is released it falls back and stops the sound. The highest notes don't actually have a damper. This is because the sound disappears so quickly that the damper actually has little effect. Have you ever seen such a large car wash? It covers an area of 15,000 square meters. It can wash 300 cars every hour and at least 4,000 cars a day. A standard wash costs 8 euros, while a VIP wash is 40 euros. The daily turnover can reach nearly 100,000 US dollars. Why is this car wash so popular? The answer lies in its business philosophy. Here, the car wash involves 15 steps. First, a special cleaning agent is sprayed on. Its purpose is to dissolve insect residues and other debris. Then, it's manually cleaned with a high-pressure gun. The entire process only takes 30 seconds. After the wash, a drying agent is sprayed to better absorb moisture. Finally, the car enters a drying room. Here, it simulates a wind speed of 90 kilometers h with temperatures reaching 70 degrees. The entire car wash process takes eight minutes. If a customer finds their car isn't cleaned properly, the owner will personally apologize and clean it for them to ensure the customer's satisfaction. The owner's attitude pleases many, promising them to return. The car wash owner also opened a gas station on the first floor. To attract customers, the price of gas here is about one euro, which is slightly cheaper than other gas stations. When customers pay, they are often recommended to get a car wash card. About one-third of customers get one. This is an important reason why their business is booming. Apart from refueling and car washing, the owner also offers car maintenance services. After refueling, employees ask if the car owner needs maintenance. If the owner needs maintenance, employees can check the car's mileage on the computer and provide maintenance suggestions. In the back, customers can watch each step of the maintenance on a screen without leaving their car. Additionally, the $40 package includes a waxing service. During the waxing process, customers can relax in the lounge area. Free coffee and snacks are provided, ensuring customers feel they're getting their money's worth. What do you think of the service at this car wash? Would you go if it were up to you? Do you know what humans have discovered in the deepest parts of the ocean? 
At a depth of 300 meters, giant spider crabs inhabit this area. Their legs can grow up to 4.2 meters, and they can live for up to 100 years. At 332 meters underwater, an Egyptian diver reached this depth with the help of professional equipment. It's currently the world record for the deepest human dive. He descended to this depth in just 15 minutes, but it took him 13 hours to return to the surface. At 500 meters deep, you can find the world's largest animal, the blue whale, which can reach lengths of up to 33 meters and weigh 181 tons. Emperor penguins can also easily dive to this depth. At 600 meters below the surface, you'll find the barrel-eye fish with a transparent head and eyes that can only look upward. At 700 meters, the territory of European eels begins, with the largest individuals reaching 1.4 meters. At 900 meters, the giant squid is active, with a body length of up to 20 meters. At 1,000 meters, ordinary people might be instantly flattened due to the immense pressure, and visibility is close to zero. At 1,280 meters, you'll encounter the great white shark. The largest known individuals can reach up to 7.2 meters in length and weigh 3.2 tons. At 1,300 meters deep, the leatherback sea turtle and the goblin shark, the world's largest sea turtle, can be found at this maximum diving depth. At 1,700 meters, the elephant seal can dive to this depth. Male southern elephant seals can reach lengths of 6.5 meters and weigh 4 tons. At 2,000 meters deep, the anglerfish thrives it looks like venom. At 2,200 meters, you'll find the habitat of the sperm whale, the largest toothed whale, with lengths of up to 20 meters. At 3,000 meters, deep sea coral reefs grow. At 3,800 meters, you reach the depth where the Titanic sank in 1912. At 4,000 meters, giant squid, known for their colossal tentacles, dive to their deepest point. At 4,500 meters, the hagfish resides. At 6,000 meters, you're nearing the Mariana Trench, where the pressure is equivalent to seven elephants standing on your hand.